Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for part 4 of the Ravenport walkthrough for beginners. Now, if you've been following along up to this point, you should have your fields planted, our big new field planted with soybeans, and you should have your smaller field now planted with canola. I do, I hope you do too. Now you're wondering what do we do next? Well, we need to wait for these fields to start growing a little bit. We need to get one more application of fertilizer on, so to get full yield on our fields, we need two applications of fertilizer. And so in order to put the second application on, we have to wait until we see growth on these fields. Now we've got fast crop growth on right now, so it shouldn't take too much longer before they start to grow, but we do have a couple things that we can get taken care of. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do right now is is say that you should go watch my video on field preparation. It goes into a lot more detail and will give you a lot understand a lot deeper understanding of how fields operate and what you can do on them. It's a very detailed video about every step and what process you should use depending on the field and what its requirements are. So go check that out for sure either after this video or take a break and then come back. But either way, now that we planted our field well, we can see that our cedar is pretty beat up. So we're gonna pull it right up to our toolbox here. We're gonna open it up and actually we're seeing our tractor. Our tractor condition has started to drop a little bit also. We can repair that real quickly. It's gonna cost us $86, hit yes. And now our tractor is in peak working condition again. Now you're going to have to move equipment around just a little bit around the toolbox sometimes in order for it to trigger properly. But if we move our cedar, now we've got our cedar here and we can see it's, it's falling down a little bit. It's only going to cost $8 to repair, so we're going to do that. We just want to make sure that our equipment is in perfect working condition. Now you don't have to do this every single time, just be aware that it does need to take place from time to time, otherwise you will start to, uh, to lose productivity on your equipment. You'll work slower, things like that. So now we're going to come over here to our power washer and we're just going to clean this thing up. And you just hose it down a little bit for a few seconds. And eventually you'll see all this dirt start to come off. It doesn't take long. See how it's disappearing there? Technically you don't even have to move the washer around. It just seems like a more natural thing to do. And there we go. Good as new. Now our tractor's not in bad shape, so we won't fiddle with that right now. Now, I can see over here that our soybean field has decided to start growing. I knew it wasn't going to take long. And we've got our fertilizer spreader all set up and ready to go. Now this isn't going to be much different from when we put our lime on. In fact, it's almost the same process. We just have fertilizer now instead of lime. Now, when you're trying to fertilize a field that has already started growing, it can be just a little bit tricky to see where you've been. And I'll show you what I mean. Now on a field that hasn't grown yet, you can really see where the fertilizer falls and if you pay real close attention in the video here you can almost see how the field looks wet where the fertilizer is being placed but it can still be very very difficult to see exactly where that fertilizer has fallen we're going to make sure we cover the whole field or yeah all the way out to the edges And again, I think I'm going to do headland passes to start with. You can almost see in the sunlight right there where part of that soil looks wet. This looks wetter, this looks more dry. But with the plants in the way, it becomes more and more difficult. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that you've gotten every nook and cranny of your fields fertilized. It's pretty simple. It just gets a little bit tedious. Let's get a headland pass done first. If 
fact, I think I'm just going to sweep around like so instead of cutting those corners. Again, we're not looking for perfection. We are just looking for everything to be covered. So, Now, as far as view, view angle goes, and I don't know if I mentioned this before, but you know, if you would prefer to drive from inside the cab, be my guest. I just find it easier to do it in a third person perspective, especially when you're doing a job. You need to see exactly what the tool behind you is doing, things like that. Now we should be coming up on where we started. You can almost see the edge of it right there, just barely. And I'm just going to sweep around and come back in the opposite direction at this point. Now, what I was saying about making sure that everything is covered, we can start looking at our map and we need to go down to our fields and make sure that we are on soil composition so that we can see exactly how much of this has turned, has turned dark blue. So far we're doing a pretty good job of covering everything. I'm actually a little, a little close. I could be covering a lot more area in a shorter amount of time. But with that said, if I was to miss anything, that map view is going to tell me. I'll try to stretch out just a little farther this time. See, I'm still covering pretty well. I'm still technically a little too close to where I've covered before. Now again, it doesn't matter. It just has to be done. It doesn't have to be perfect. The one drawback is that, you know, if you go over something with your fertilizer spreader a second time, it's going to keep using that fertilizer so you'll be double fertilizing and spending extra money on fertilizer but it doesn't take long now see I will I'll show you right here as we come up on this the end of this field I can see a spot that I missed now you can see these two spots right here these are those two spots we couldn't get seeded, so we don't have to worry about those, but this spot right here, I missed that. And I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. Now, it's not going to hurt anything to leave it. If you want to leave it, go right ahead. But what I'll do is start heading for that area, make sure my tractor is pointed at that spot, and when I start getting close, I'll turn my fertilizer spreader back on, like so, and when I'm pretty sure I've gotten past it, now you can see that spot has disappeared. So we've covered that part. So that's what I, I use the map a lot in this situation. If I've got crop on the field and I can't see where my fertilizer's gone very well, I will use that technique to get the job done and make sure I've hit everything I need to hit. Now our canola field is being a little weird. This happens from time to time in Farming Simulator. The growth stages get off kilter a little bit so you can see we've got some growth along the edge here and then we've got a couple of plots out there that have decided they want to grow but the rest of the field is not quite there yet now there's a couple of things we could do at this point we could leave it and come back later or we could advance time a little bit and see if they don't come in for us And all you have to do to advance time is just speed up. Now if you look at the clock in the upper right hand corner, it says 1404, and right beside, below that, it says 5. That means we're running at 5 times speed. So, an hour will take one-fifth of the time it normally would. We can advance that all the way up to like 2000 if we want to, but if we just bump it up a little bit, for me that's hitting the 8 key. We bump that up to about 30, even 60. We'll give this about 30 minutes to see if the rest of this field comes in. 
Keep your fingers crossed. Now this works the other way too. You can slow down time if you want to. If you feel like your day is uh, getting a little running by a little too quick, you've got too much work to get done, you can slow time down to one time speed. So you're working in real time. No problem there. I'm going to bump it up just a little bit more. I said about half an hour, but I'm going to give it until 1500 or 3 o'clock. No, this field is just not going to cooperate with us today. Well, that's all well and good. Okay. In fact, I know I'm going to want this fertilizer spreader. And at this point, you do know how to spread fertilizer, obviously. So we'll just leave that field as a homework assignment again. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll just keep working that pattern. I'll do one field, show you what to do, and then you will do the other field on your own. Should have just done that to start with. Okay, now, once all the fertilizer is on our fields, we've got two passes of fertilizer. All we have to do now is wait for them to grow and get ready to harvest. So now you're going, well, Harv, we've taken care of our farm. What do we do now? Well, I'm going to tell you what we do now. Now we make money. We can make money while we're waiting on our crops to grow, and we do that by going into our menu, and we hit this middle button right here. It looks like some sheets of paper, and these are our contracts. Now, there are many different types of contracts, many different kinds indeed, but right now we're seeing only a few. We've got a transporting contract, we've got harvesting contracts, We've got baling contracts, and we've got one for cultivating. Transporting means you go pick up some pallets at one location and deliver them to another location. I think we'll try that first. Harvesting, well, we've done a little bit of harvesting, so it might be a good idea for us to take on one of those as well. And this pays very well, and I'm going to tell you about harvesting contracts very soon. Now, baling contracts... These can be good also, but we're going to cover baling and all that in a special episode just about grass work. And then cultivating is just cultivating a field. So let's start with a transport contract. We've got this one for 1900 at the water tower. Let's, we need to go from the water tower to the Spanish mission. So we're going to accept that contract. And we're going to grab our trailer. Now we need something to haul pallets on. And you're going to say, we probably need a flatbed. And I'm going to say, that's right. And you're going to say, but Harv, we don't have a flatbed. Well, we do. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> but you're going to know here in a second. Now, one thing to keep in mind, most of your tools have things that can be changed on them. And this trailer is no exception. exception. So if we pull this right up to our toolbox we can go into customize we've got a configuration a capacity configuration we can bump this up to 8,000 I think we're at 8,000 right now we could reduce it to 4,000 if we wanted to why I don't know why we would do that we could also go up to 12,000 but that's going to cost us an additional two thousand dollars we might need 12,000 liters at some point but we can also turn it into a bale loading wagon or a flatbed and that costs us no dollars so we're going to customize that trailer to a flatbed and we need to hook up to it again because anytime you customize something it it disconnects it from your from whatever it's attached to and we are going to go in search of our water tower now one thing that's a little bit annoying about these types of contracts is they don't tell you where they are like there's nothing on the map to indicate where this water tower is and I think they do that so that you'll do some exploring and see all of the lovely things that uh, <laughs> that they want you to see so my best guess is going to be now this is our town down in this area I'm gonna guess that the water tower is probably right down here
Okay, so I got lucky and I found the water tower right away. And if you're still looking around for it, this is the spot you want to be. Right here. Nice big circle on the map right there where it's supposed to be. So, I'm going to drop my trailer off. I'm going to come in here. And you can see that there are these three pallets with maybe green batteries or green boxes of some kind sitting on there. You'll always see these in a marked off area like this. I'm just going to pull up with my loader to one of these pallets. I'm going to hook up to it, pick it up. Luckily there's no traffic to block here. I'm going to lift this up nice and high. I'm just going to load it from the end. Another thing that's nice about this, it'll give you some practice manipulating your equipment a little bit. And we're just going to drop that pallet right on that trailer, like so. And we're just going to do the same thing for the other two pallets. Bit of a tight squeeze here. Judging the height can be a little bit of a challenge even in third person. And we're just going to try to push these all the way up front. I'll drop that other pallet on. And we'll get the last one, like so. Okay, and we'll drop that pallet off. Okay, now that we've got our pallets all loaded up here, if we just leave them on this deck, they're going to slide all over the place and probably fall off. But these trailers have straps built in. Now there's two ways to trigger these straps. You can walk up to the trailer until you see that green and hit, at least for me it's R, and you can manually strap these down like so. Or you can get into your tractor and hit the L key if you're on PC and it will automatically strap everything down. So now we know that we need to take these to the Spanish mission. And I know that this big building right here is the Spanish mission. So it's on the far side of the map. We need to get them right up to the front door. So I'm going to head that way. And I hope you'll find your way over there as well. And I'll see you when we're ready to deliver. I am just pulling up to the Spanish mission. You can see it right there in front of us. It's quite the lovely landmark. Looks like they're doing some restoration work on it. I'm sure it's been around for a very long time. And we want to pull right up to the front gate. Right about here. Again, we're going to drop our trailer. And now, you can see that there is a marked area right here and that's where we need to drop our pallets. So, same as we did before, actually. Don't forget to unstrap them. They will not come off the trailer <laughs> if you don't take the straps off. And in this situation, we don't need to be quite as fancy or subtle about what we're doing, so I'm going to try to grab two at a time. This tractor will easily handle that. And no, nope, I'm just going to get the one. Maybe next time. Maybe next time I'll get two. So I'm just going to bring these over here. And drop that one in. I'm going to grab the next two. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. There 
There we go. Now I got two. Bring these over and make sure they're within the boundaries of these these markers. And you can see in the right hand corner it says transport finished. That means we have fulfilled our contract. So now when we go back into our menu, we go to our contracts and we can see right here it says completed. Very nice. So we just hit collect and we've just earned a couple thousand dollars. So no complaints there. Now let's look at what other contracts we have because we just have to wait for our crops to get ready. So we've got stuff we could be doing. Now we do have a fertilizing contract available on field 17. That is right here. I like fertilizing contracts. They are very lucrative. You don't use a lot of fertilizer. They get done very quickly and you make pretty decent money on them. Now this is a smaller field. It's less than five acres. We'd make about $4,000. I'm particularly interested in field seven right now. That's got a $13,400 payout it's only soybeans and we need to take those soybeans from field seven to the restaurant i think we're going to do that one now if we look at our map we can see this is field seven right here and our restaurants down here so it's going to be it's going to require some hauling but harvesting contracts are very very good I recommend them highly. The two best contracts in the game, in my opinion, are harvesting contracts and fertilizing contracts. I like fertilizing contracts for two reasons. One, they're easy to do. They're usually reasonably quick. Often you can hire a worker to do them for you and then you can go work on something else. And I like harvesting contracts because the payout on them is exceptional. Now, you're thinking at this point the $13,000 for the contract itself is, is a great payout. It's not bad, but there's a lot more money to be made in a harvesting contract than just what the farmer is willing to pay you. So I'm just taking a path a back road that I know from the mission down to our farm. We're actually coming right up on our farm right now. Our canola is still not ready to fertilize. Again, that's going to be your homework assignment. We're just going to bring our equipment back into the farm for the moment, drop it off. And let's look at that contract again. 13,400 soybeans. Now, you have some options when you're doing contracts. If you've got the equipment be my guest go ahead and take and and uh, use your own equipment but a lot of times the farmer will loan you equipment now we can see this is 13,400 or we can borrow the items or lease equipment and our payout will be reduced by 15 basically fifteen hundred dollars now as we look down here we can see we've got a very large agco harvester a decent sized header header trailer plus three now they never tell you what the plus three is and that is frustrating and there's no way to look at it one of the major flaws of farming simulator in my opinion that you can't see what that plus three is but we do with what we have so this is 18 and a half acres we don't have equipment big enough for it so be careful when you take the contract. If you accept the contract, that means you're using your own equipment. If you hit borrow items, that means you're gonna use this equipment. In this situation, we are gonna borrow the items. And those items all appear at the shop. Well, at this point, we know how to get to the shop. Right down here. Nope, nope, that's one of the pieces of equipment. There's the shop. So if we visit the shop, we can see all of this equipment sitting here for our use. Not a bad selection. It does, however, mean that we need to get it to the field. So 
They've given us dual trailers here. It means we're going to have to uh, make a little trailer change so you get a little... Now, again, you know, you may not have the same contracts that I do. But in this situation, they've given us two trailers, and we need to attach those trailers together. Like so. And get them up to field five. What's my best route to field five? Yeah, that's a lot farther and away, a uh, far, lot farther away than I necessarily anticipated. But it's up there. Probably. Yeah, there's a road I can cut across here, or I can go down here and around up. Okay, got it. So at this point, I'm going to move this up to field 5, and then I'm going to go back for our harvester. Get that into field 5. And on these trailers, you know how to move through your pieces of equipment now. I'm just going to go ahead and take the tops off. I mean, the tops are purely there for look. They don't actually accomplish anything. It's not like your grain is going to go blowing out or anything. So um, it makes them look nice. And, and I do like the look. However, I can't unload into them with the tops on. And I can't really unload with the tops on. So it's really up to you. I mean, now we're learning the basics. We're not focused too much on realism. And as you've learned the basics and start adding to your own games, you can start considering how realistic a farmer you want to be. You know, there are methods in this game to do organic farming. Once you know enough about the game mechanics and how it operates and what mods are available to you, if you want to pretend to be an organic farmer, that is an option. In fact, we will address one way that you can add an application of fertilizer to your field before you plant your crop without using any any uh, chemical fertilizer whatsoever. Now, unless I miss my guess, oh, <laughs> field seven. Why did I have five in my head? I don't know. I drove right past it, though. When I'm still at field seven. Well, that's better. It's closer to, <laughs> closer to our delivery point anyway. But yes, field seven right here. This big mother. I'm going to go park these down on the other end. Well, yeah, too busy running my mouth. <laughs> Not spending enough time focusing on what I'm doing. That's okay. It gave me an opportunity to explain a few things to you. Okay, so we've got this here. We're going to go back to our shop. And we can just bop right back over there. And we need to grab our harvester. This is a huge harvester. This is probably the biggest you can find without some very significant mods taking place. This is the Fent Ideal. Or the Ideal Fent. Whichever way you want to phrase it. Now, it's really up to you. If you wanted to try to get this up to that field without the header trailer, you can try. It's probably going to be pretty difficult. But... We've got our own header trailer. We know how to use header trailers now, right? We're just going to line this up just about in the middle, like so. And we'll drop her down, release it. And there we go. We've got a header on a header trailer. Now, for the size of the field that we're harvesting, it's a good thing that we have. Well, I did not place my header correctly. I've got it too far forward. 
This is what I talk about. Header trailers can be fiddly. There are headers, especially the big ones, that have their own built-in trailer, which make this so much easier. Again, we can only use what we have, so this is what we've got. This is what we'll use. Hopefully that will be set properly. Keep your fingers crossed. There we go. Now well, we've got some workroom. You can see how big this harvester is running next to these little cars. It barely fits down the road. And it's not exactly lightning fast, is it? That's okay. Now one thing we can do is we truck along. You do need to unfold your harvester. Make sure that it's highlighted. And for me, I hit the X key, and you can see that the harvester starts unfolding. The pipe swings out, and the grain bin opens up. Like so. Now, luckily, we're not as far from our field as we, at least as, uh, <laughs> as I originally thought we were. We're going to bring this harvester up. should think eh, it doesn't really matter I'll park the header trailer up here in this yard so it's out of the way drop it off grab the header and we are ready to go so Having used your own harvester at this point, when we first learned on that wheat field, you should know how to harvest this field at this point. And as you get a feel for harvesting, you'll learn your own methods for this, but for now I'm going to start like so. I hit B to activate and just start working this field. Hopefully you found a field to harvest. Like I said, contracts are a little bit random, so it's likely you don't have the same contracts on your game that I have on mine. Um, but I'm going to leave you to earn some money now. Don't run off and dump all of the grain off of this field, or whatever field you're harvesting, until you see what I've done at the end of this one. Because I'm going to show you a few little tricks when it comes to completing contracts that uh, really make a difference. So when this field is fully harvested, I will see you. Okay, so I lied. Well, lie is kind of a strong word. Um, <laughs> I had a little change of heart. I wanted to uh, check in during the process of harvesting this big soybean field. Now, my harvester just filled up 17,000 17, liters, just over 17,000. And I realized that I'd shown you how to unload a harvester when it comes to our grain silo, but I hadn't really shown you much about trailers or anything like that. Now, when I'm out in the field with my harvester like this, and I'm playing by myself, I've really only got two options. I can either drive this harvester all the way back over to the tractor and unload into the trailers, or I can keep this parked here and bring the tractor to me. This gives me an opportunity to show you something I don't think I'd mentioned earlier, but if we want to switch between vehicles, and we know we're working here at Field 7, all of these dots represent different pieces of equipment. So this green dot is the vario, Fent Vario that we borrowed and these two blue dots are the two trailers attached to it. If I click on that tractor 
I have the option to enter that vehicle. So I can automatically switch right into it. Which easily gives me the opportunity to switch over and drive this over to our harvester. Now, I could drive straight away and go through the field and uh, it wouldn't hurt anything at this point. If I had crop destruction turned on, it would. But as things stand, this isn't going to hurt anything at all. So with that said, I'm just going to pull this, these trailers right under the pipe here. And once I do, it will recognize that trailer and start to unload. Now when this trailer gets full, I'll just keep pulling forward and start loading into the rear trailer like so. So the harvesters recognize the trailers and know when to unload, even when you're not driving them. So that's a nice thing. Now another nice thing is if I was to set a helper on this, I could actually drive beside the helper and just continually unload that harvester as that person drives. We're going to discuss helpers probably in another episode. See how it's trying to unload as it passes by those trailers because I've harvested just enough for it to want to unload. Now it's up to you. You can leave the pipe out the whole time. It's purely your choice. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be standard operating procedure in the real world, but in Farming Simulator it's not hurting anything. Okay, with that said, I will check back in with you, I think, when those two trailers are completely full of grain. Full of soybeans, I should say. See you in a little bit. Okay, so I am just finishing up harvesting the soybean field. Coming up on the last little bit right now. Come on, come on. And I have not filled up the trailers yet. I, I kind of had the feeling that um, they would fill before now, but I do think I'm going to have more than I can fit in the trailer. There's probably going to be some left in this harvester. We'll see. I'm almost sure. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, 3,000 liters left in the trailer. And I know my other trailer is already, already full. Okay. So, we look at our contract here. Now, we are 84% complete, and that's without delivering any soybeans yet. That's just the harvesting part. Keep that in mind. Now, we've been told we have to take these soybeans to the restaurant. And that's an absolute truth. We have to deliver soybeans to the restaurant. But at this point, we also want to look at where can we get top value for soybeans. Now, it just so happens the restaurant is paying $2,722 per 1,000 liters. This is always per 1,000. So for each 1,000 liters we deliver, if they were our own soybeans, we'd make twenty-seven twenty-two. It's not always the case. Sometimes these contract people want you to take it. Like it's a possibility we would have had to deliver to the ranch, for whatever reason, that field owner decided to take a hit on the soybeans. Why is this important to us? Well, the real money from a harvesting contract is not in what we get paid for the contract. The real money is in how much crop is left over for us. Because there's usually a pretty substantial amount that we can take advantage of and make money on beyond what we get paid for the contract. With that said, We're going to run this down to the restaurant. I know where the restaurant is. I'm just not sure the best direct route. It's over. Yeah, we're just going to have to take this route all the way down. 
Okay, so I'm sure you can find your way to the restaurant. I will meet you there. And we'll talk about delivering. As I pull into the restaurant on the back side here, this is the Good Coast restaurant, not to be confused with the Gold Coast restaurant. <laughs> we can see that there's a grate that's real similar to the one for our silo. And I just want to get my trailers up on this grate now. It's not triggering for me to dump in. And I'll tell you why. Because trailers like this have a variable tip function. So these can tip backwards, but they can also tip to the side. And if you see in our controls menu, for me it's the letter U and it says tip side back. If I hit U, it's now going to say tip side left. And so that trailer is going to tip and empty to the left. So if I activate that, you can see it's going to tip to the left. Now I need to switch to my rear trailer and it's a tip side back trailer and that works just fine because it's not attached to anything. Nothing is in the way to prevent it from tipping backwards. Now, keep in mind, oh, huh, well, just as well. We finished the contract on field seven. We do not want to collect on that yet. And I tipped enough to make $16,000 in soybeans and I've got 4,000 left, but I've also got 3,000 left in that harvester up there and that's why I can't collect on the contract yet. If I collect on the contract, all of this equipment goes away, including the soybeans left in the harvester. So if I wanted to keep these soybeans to take to a different location, I would start tipping very slowly, like so, just a little bit and then stop. And you just do that with the same key that you use to overload, as it's saying right now. If I hit I, it'll start tipping. If I hit I again, it will stop. Now I'm going to go ahead and tip the rest of these in because I know this is the best place for me to make money on soybeans. And I just made another 10 grand on the soybeans that I have. And I've got 3,000 more. So I'm going to go get those. And I'll see you when I get back to the restaurant. Last of the soybeans coming into the restaurant right now. Just another, just over 3,000 liters. And I uh, will get those sold. There we go, another 8,000. So now I can go into my contracts. We can see that our harvesting contract is complete. And we are going to make $11,911 on that contract. We are good. So we can collect that 11,911. And what I want to do at this point is take a look at my finance menu. That's this dollar sign right here. And if I look at today, harvest income, $35,000. That was the soybean we just sold. Contracts income, 13,837 and only 11,000 of that was from doing the actual harvesting. This is what makes harvesting contracts so lucrative, the leftover grain. So we just made yeah, 45,000, $46,000 for harvesting one field. Now we're left standing here without a vehicle, but that's beside the point. We just made $46,000 for harvesting one field. Now they're not always gonna be that fantastic. That was a pretty big field if I'm, if I'm honest. But we can keep doing that as often as we like. Now, beware. You'll see sewing contracts, and this is sew field 15 with potatoes. $15,000. That might seem like a lot of money, but these potato planters are small, and you have to buy all the seed. I don't happen to find that the sewing contracts to be quite as lucrative. Now, doing this one with oats, that might not be a bad one. But potatoes and sugar beets, avoid those like the plague. Now we still have this fertilizing contract on field 17. 
this one instead of borrowing items and taking a hit I could just accept that contract and the reason I want to do and this is going to be the last contract we do for this episode that will pretty much fill you in on exactly what you need to do you know a seeding contract well you're gonna have a seeder and uh, you go out and plant a field we've done that we do that on our own field so you know how to do that you just have to buy the seed and there's nothing wrong with doing that um, now also keep in mind right here your homework assignment this field still needs fertilizer also so don't forget to do that and it's fully air it's started to grow now so it can be fertilized but let's see that was field 17 right yes and field 17 is pretty much at the top of the hill right up here and we've got a back way now our little fence is going to struggle up this hill just a little bit because it's not quite as powerful as it could be but in the long and short of it it'll be fine so I'll see you on field 17 all right so I'm just coming up on field 17 it's right here on my right it's this field right here now fertilizer contracts are nice because you don't have to be perfect you don't have to be special in fact you can do these as ugly and dirty as you want you do not have to cover every square inch if you miss some you miss some it does not matter now again if you want to play with the level of realism be my guest you know I've seen guys who say oh we need to make sure that this field is properly fertilized and have integrity well right now we're just learning the mechanics again it's your game play it your way whatever is fun for you but you know when it comes to fertilizer contracts again down and dirty we are supplying the fertilizer so the less we use the more money we make now whatever the contract is paying you the cost of fertilizer comes out of your own pocket now we're not going to use up enough fertilizer especially on a field this small to really cut into that profit very much and that's what makes fertilizer one of the things that makes fertilizer contracts so nice and all we're looking for at this point is to cover enough of this field to see contract complete pop up in the upper right hand corner of our screen now that's not to say you can do half the field and it's going to pop up for you you know you are going to have to try to get most of it but the point being you don't have to be perfect not perfect at all If I miss a few little strips here and there, a few bits and bobs, <laughs> as our UK brethren might say, it is what it is. And again, as I'm going down here, I'm just looking for contract complete to pop up on my screen. And we should be getting pretty darn close to that. And I can always check this by looking at my contract. See, we're at 95%, 97%. And this one's actually going to be a little more finicky than a lot of them are. 98. There it is. Boom. I'll shut off my fertilizer spreader. Done. That's four grand in the bank. 3,800. We'll take it. So, that is what you do when your own fields are sitting there waiting. When you've got all the work done on your farm, grab some contracts, go make some more cash. You're going to need it. <laughs> you really are. And I think that's going to do it for this episode, or this part of the Ravenport Beginners Walkthrough. I hope you found it educational, entertaining, or otherwise. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. I will be happy to help you out. I do appreciate you uh, 
taking a look at this. And uh, again, if you enjoyed it, found it entertaining or educational, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And until next time, take care.